So your forehand doesn't have the depth that you want, doesn't have the pace, you're not able to get the top spin, you can't dominate your opponents the way you want. Well, good news is you're in the right place because I'm going to help you today. What I've done is I've pulled together some powerful tips to help you solidify and build a strong forehand foundation. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution. If you can't tell by now, I am very passionate about helping players all over the world improve. Let's go ahead and jump in to this powerful lesson where I've pulled together some of my best tips to help you with your forehand. All right, let's get started. So how the heck do you hold the grip? Well, you wanna put your hand on the racket like this. Okay, semi-western grip or even an eastern grip like this, I prefer the semi-western. Now if I put the racket down on the ground, if I just grab it like this, now I'm in that semi-western grip. You see, the mistake that players make is that when they swing the racket, they hold it more like this, and this creates tension. I call this a block grip with the fingers squished together. We want to spread that index finger like this. We call this the trigger finger. And if it's spread like this, now you can have feel in the hand when you swing the racket. Because when you come over here, now you can feel your ability to brush up the back of the ball like this. When you swing, you're brushing up the back of the ball. If you have the block grip and you swing, it's going to be more like this. You're going to be blocking the ball. You're not going to be able to get that feel with the hand. Also, one little quick tip for you. When you hold the racket, try to get the heel of the hand off of the racket like this. This is an advanced tip. A lot of players I see are very choked up. You can hit topspin this way, but you're going to lose out on a lot of power. Now, the first thing that I want you to consider is that when you make your first move, forget about the lag and snap. When you make your first move, you want to feel like your arms are relaxed. You don't want to have tension here. Okay, but you also want to make sure you have plenty of space. So when I make this first move, I feel pretty relaxed in my arms. Now when I take the racket back, yes, it would be great to get it in the slot. It would be great to keep the racket on this side of the body, but I've seen players that are top 10 in the world let the racket get back here. So this is not the be all end all. Making sure that you stay on this side of the body and you lag right here is not the thing that's going to solve your forehand in the short term. Maybe it's a long term fix. But if you want to get going feeling confident on your forehand, you want to get to this position no matter what. Get to a position that looks like this. Very simple, arm is pulled across, it's not locked out, it's also not too, it's also not too bent like this. And you're in this position here. Now, if you can just keep your hand relaxed, if you can just keep your hand relaxed like this with minimal tension in the hand, look at how it naturally will lag. It will naturally lag and you don't have to think about it. What happens is when you're stiff, when you take the racket back and you're gripping too tight, you can't lag. Watch what happens when I just, when I just relax my wrist, it naturally lags. If I grip very tight, this is what the racket looks like. If I relax my wrist, it naturally closes. If I relax my hand on the racket. So you want to make sure you have minimal tension in your hand when you're swinging. You don't want to be gripping tight. You also don't want to be gripping tight and trying to force this position right here with grip tension. You want this lag to happen because the arm is loose. Okay, I hope you got that. I want you to find your lag because the arm is loose. You're not getting it from forcing. Okay, you're not getting it by gripping too tight and forcing the racket here. So this is a huge concept that if your hand and your wrist are relaxed, watch what happens. If I'm relaxed, if I'm relaxed and I'm still relaxed right here, I'm not gripping tight, I'm not thinking about lagging, it just naturally lays back. If I grip too tight and try to swing, look, I don't get the lag. Most of you out there are struggling because you grip the racket too tight. It's as simple as that. All you want to focus on doing is having a loose hand and wrist, especially when you take the racket back and you start to go forward. That's how you create the lag without thinking about it, without forcing it, without creating tension in your arm. Now let's get to the next part about the snap or, or rotating those hips. This rotation concept is killing your forehand. We hear it so much with coaches talking about how you should rotate your hips. Rotate your hips on your forehand, you'll get more power. Ah, 
Ah, oh, we see the pros doing it, right? We see Nadal do it. Ah, oh, right? Okay, you can do that when you're open stance. That makes sense. But if you're stepping in and you're in a neutral stance like this, if you move your hips too early and you lift your chest and you lift your head, which by the way is what I see 95% of all players doing, you're gonna get yourself into trouble. You're gonna, your body, I call it, your body is blowing up. It's basically blowing up, you're pulling your head off the ball, you're rotating your hips too early. So here's the solution. When you swing, when you swing, you have to keep your hips quiet. It's the opposite of what coaches are telling you to do, this idea of rotating the hips early. Again, the disclaimer here is that if you're an advanced player, you're, you're developing a world-class forehand, I understand that you would want to unload the hips first and let that kinetic chain work for you. But a lot of you watching this video don't have that skill set yet, and it's better to keep your body quiet. So when you swing, if you'll notice my hips here, do you see a lot of rotation in my hips? It's, I'm, not, I'm not firing my hips when I go to hit this ball. I'm, it, it feels like I'm barely moving my hips. I know my hips are moving, but they're not firing forcefully and they're not going early. That whole lag and snap concept, I've thrown it out. I never, I never even considered it. When I'm hitting a ball, I'm thinking about, can I stay quiet? Now, most of you watching this aren't, again, you're not big league players yet. You're not pros. So what you want to focus on is keeping your hips and your body quiet. Watch my head. My head doesn't even move. It doesn't fire. My chest doesn't lift. Okay, you have to ignore Rafa Nadal right now, the violence of Rafa Nadal's forehand. Ignore it. And you get to focus on keeping your head down and you just have a relaxed arm and hand. And this is where I love at the end of the swing, you can just relax your hand like this. This is the easy power I want you to practice every day. If you want to be a 354045 master this concept first. My belief is that if you get the finish right, you can hit great topspin forehands. So you've, you've got your grip, you've made your first move. You learn how to drop the racket towards the ground like this. So the tip of the racket is down and all you have to do is finish high and over the shoulder. So you wanna make sure you finish high and over the shoulder like this. This is what you wanna focus on right now. So you're going to focus on finishing the swing like this and notice that I'm over the shoulder like this. That's my low to high swing path and I'm focusing on what I call the wrist break. Now this is controversial, but give it a shot because a lot of players when they swing, when they finish like this, they don't break the wrist enough to get enough topspin. So you want to focus on that when you're swinging. So at the end of the swing, finish high over the shoulder and break the wrist. Well, let me actually start with a question. How do you get power? How do you get power, especially on your forehand side? Well, there's a couple of ways. The first way is to make sure that your body is relaxed, especially your arm and your hand. You have to have a relaxed arm and hand. But to get power, you also have to use the ground appropriately. If you use the ground inefficiently, you're going to lose power. Probably going to lose control. You might even start mishitting forehands because I'm going to explain in a moment. So for a basic forehand, when you're stepping into the ball, when you swing, you have to make sure that you push against the ground at the right time to get that easy power, to build that solid forehand. And what, here's what I see players doing. When they get ready to swing, Maybe their front knee is bent a little bit, okay? They're in position, they're in a neutral stance like this. As they go to swing, they straighten up. So before they make contact, they straighten their front leg. So all of the energy is gone. All of the energy from the ground, that ground to create that easy power where you push off, it's gone. It's gone away, it's been released. So players are getting excited and they're straightening this leg before contact and now it's just all arm and their head and their chest have elevated above where they were just a fraction of a second earlier. So as you're tracking the ball coming in and you have a bent knee as you step in, if you straighten before contact, look at what my chest and my head did. It lifted up like this and there's probably a little bit of rotation too that's happening. 
So the key and the way you're going to fix this, if you feel like you're popping up and your coach keeps saying, stop popping up, stop popping up, stop popping up, but you don't know how to fix it. Here's one key that I want to give you. When you swing, to exaggerate this, I want you to keep your front knee bent. This ball is in your strike zone. It's not a high ball. If the ball is high, okay, you have to straighten your legs sooner. But if the ball is in your strike zone and the knee is bent like this, keep it bent. Now you say, wait a minute, Jeff, I've studied your videos. You actually do straighten your leg. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Keep your knee bent until after contact. Okay? Keep your knee bent after contact. Now, what you're going to do next is you can straighten the leg after you've made contact. So my knee is bent on my front knee, and then I straighten. Knee is bent, and then I straighten. What's happening is you are straightening before contact. You are going early. That's this idea of rotating your hips early, of trying to get more power, manufacturing power. You want to practice swinging and then straightening. So if you have to delay the straightening of your leg, so be it. Exaggerate the bend and then the straighten. The bend, then the straighten. If you start straight, you're not going to be able to use the ground. If you bend and then you straighten before contact, you've released the energy before contact. So you can't release it into the ball. So make sure that your, your knee is bent when the ball is in strike zone and then you swing, you're here, and then you can straighten up. Now I've been able to work on this forehand long enough where as I'm swinging, I'm starting to straighten, but I haven't totally locked out yet. What I see players doing is I see them locking and even lifting up their heel like this. So they actually lock, they actually lock their leg and lift and then they make contact and that's what's throwing you off. I see this stuff right here, straighten before contact. Most of the time I see players really struggling here and they realize after I work with them and after I consult with them that they have got to figure out a strategy to train this part of the court. Okay? Stop spending so much time at the baseline when you're losing the bulk of your points in here, especially against very consistent players, people there that are called pushers. You have to get better in this part of the court. So today what I want to talk about is when you get a ball that's uh, short, okay, it's in front of you here, and maybe you're moving off to the side a little bit. Okay, and I'll even give you an example of when the ball's in the middle. But I see a lot of players running up like this to grab a low ball. Maybe it's a drop shot, maybe it's a slice, maybe it just is dropping in front of them. And what I see is, I see a lot of players coming up and by the time they get to the ball, they're on their front foot. That's a big mistake. What you want to practice doing is you want to measure it so that you can get up to this foot right here, this outside leg. And as you swing, you'll be bringing this foot forward. So it's called, I call it a run through. You're not really running. It's a jog through or a walk through. So essentially what you want to do is you want to train yourself when you're moving at an angle for a low ball, you want to get this outside leg in front of your body like this. And as you swing, you're going to step through. Most players are coming up. Okay, they're coming up and they're on their front foot. And they're really, they don't have clarity around what to do on this shot. So let me move this up a little bit here for you. So they come up and they don't have any clarity with their footwork. Let me do that again, actually. They come up and they're on their, I can't even do it wrong. I've, I've done it so, so long uh, the correct way. You come up, front foot, oh, and you reach and it throws you off balance. There's a number of problems with this. One big problem is that when you're hitting off your front foot, you're going to have a tendency to lunge, lunge at the ball like this. Okay. Lunging is not good. We want to have dynamic balance moving through the shot. So if I come up, you can see my body and my head stay very quiet. Watch my head and my body as I make this move. Now you say to me, Jeff, how do I practice this? I'm working, I'm hitting with someone, we're hitting ground strokes. I don't understand, how can I practice this? Look what I'm doing right now. I'm tossing the ball to myself until the footwork gets more natural, okay? You make, the, you make the footwork more natural and you get used to just jogging through the ball. 
from the outside foot to the inside foot. And you can just toss these balls to yourself, record it on your phone and see if you, it looks like mine. A lot of times, again, a lot of players are on their front foot too early reaching for the ball. So one problem is reaching. What's another problem? When you get on your front foot, there's a tendency to turn sideways too much. Now your hips are blocked. So if you turn sideways running up to this ball that, and you're moving this direction, you're going to have a tendency to stay sideways. And when you do that, that can block your arm. So you can't really keep your hips open when you do that, right? Your hips are closed and you can't really maybe get the angle that you want. A lot of times you're gonna to wanna to hit a great angle on this shot. I see a lot of players when they hit, they're on their front foot and they just hit it straight down the middle and they get passed. But if you can lead with your outside leg, now it's easier to hit an angle because my hips are facing more, right? My hips, if I hit this ball off of this leg, look at my hips, they're facing the net more and now I can steer the ball down the line or I can hit an angle. As soon as I run this way and step in and, and close off my hips, now I'm gonna be blocked on the angle. I can only really go down the middle. You can still hit an angle, but it's hard. It doesn't feel natural. That's why it's so important to lead with this outside leg. This is a situational shot where opening up your stance is absolutely necessary. So I say, let's take a page out of Rafa Nadal's book and go with the buggy whip forehand. That's right, the buggy whip forehand. This is one of the secrets to beating the slicer. So what the heck is the buggy whip forehand and why am I suggesting it? <clears throat> you see, when the ball is coming super low, it's sometimes difficult to get under the ball and finish over the shoulder or even finishing across the body like this. Okay, so what I would suggest that you do is you work on what's called the buggy whip. Now the buggy whip that I teach isn't a buggy whip where you swing and you pull off the ball like this. This is what I see most people do. What you're gonna see is you're gonna see extension first. So if I turn to the side here and I swing, you're gonna see extension here before it lassos over the head again. But what I like to do, especially if you want to pop the ball, is we just keep the hand in front like this. And you'll notice this hook, this hook move I have here. Okay, I'm hooking, I'm hooking the ball like this. See how the racket is actually pointing to the side? So it doesn't, this is really important, it doesn't flip back like this. You can do that if you want, but it could cause shoulder problems and you don't get outside the ball. So it's a very distinct finish where, look at where my racket finishes. It's hooked, I call it the buggy whip hook. The racket is facing to the side and maybe even a little bit down. And the hand is above the head like this. So if you see the ball come low to your forehand, you are going to hook the outside of the ball like that. And you can really, if you notice, you can really accelerate, loose hand, you can really accelerate with this swing. Now some coaches will say this buggy whip stuff is nonsense. What are you talking about, Jeff? Well, one, I can tell you I got to top 100 in the world because I added this dimension to my game. Anytime someone sliced to my forehand, I just used the buggy whip. Okay, that really helped me a lot. Anytime the ball was really skidding, when the ball is skidding through fast, there's a tendency to be late on the contact. Well, if you use a buggy whip, you can actually get away with being late and hit the ball more to the side of the body. You don't have to catch it in front as much. You can let the ball come into you and you can hook it. Now, the tips that I just shared with you, they've helped thousands of players before and they can help you. So what I want you to do is get out on the court and just take one of the tips I've shared today and see how it works for you. If it doesn't quite work, pick another tip. But what I am telling you is all the tips that I've shared with you today can make a huge difference and help you transform your forehand. Now, before you go today, there are three forehand mistakes that a lot of players are making, most players are making. Teaching pros are not catching these mistakes 
and I want to make sure that you learn them and that you know how to fix them. And so the way you're going to learn them is by clicking inside this video or there's a link in the description below that will reveal these three mistakes. All you have to do is opt in. It's absolutely free and I'd love to help. So this is Jeff Salzenstein over and out. Thank you so much for your time.